You certainly can. He goes up but goes all the way back down again. It's a, it's a tough track, this one, because you've got great passing opportunities in the first two corners, and you've got to bide your time all the way up across the top of the mountain through Reed Park, McPhillamy, and then down the famous skyline section through the S's, through the Dipper, and then onto this big, long straight there on now. Conrod Straight actually being shortened over the years. It used to be one long, massive straight all the way down to the final corner, and they added in this chase complex that they're coming up to now. What it means, though, is uh, slipstream galore into this chase. It's going to be the best overtaking spot on the track because into this kink to the right and then down this massive braking zone here to get the cars back to the left before they get towards the final corner. Probably going to be the action spot of the race. Once again, for those just tuning in, we apologize for the technical issues. We're completing the first lap and an estimated 17 here today at Mount Panorama Circuit for the Big C's MX-5 Challenge. Justin Prince alongside Brian Jones, Sean Ambrose in the director's seat using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. And what has been a good start? Vicente Salas in the lead after starting from the head of the field. Maxime Bonovich in second. DJ Alessandrini, a winning driver this series in third. Marcello Pagnon, who is a perfect two for two at this racetrack in fourth. And Logan Clampett, the, pro, the Burton Wigerman Esports machine, rounds out the top five at the moment to start things off in the circuit. Again, 40 minutes the distance. These drivers expected to go up to 25 minutes on the fuel per the settings. We'll have to take at around 7.4 to 7.6 liters or 2.25 gallons as this race progresses. Battles going on for Fulham. Sees Clampett set wide. He loses a spot to James Sharp and falls back to six and then some. And he might lose out here to Peno too, going side by side into the cutting. The MX-5s are probably the only cars you could get away with this on the service. Clampett is just about going to hold on, and he will hold on there through the cutting. So a great recovery there from him. He still lost those to that spot to uh, Pajon and James Sharp as well. But a few cars lined up behind him now. You're going to have to be careful side by side behind him. is Clifford even. <laughs> so, I love these MX-5s because you can go side by side in sections of the track you cannot do in any other car. No bloody warning given just now to Pajnon for contact with Logan Clampett on that battle for position. So that is something to keep in mind. The battle for the lead starting to shape up though. It's a three car draft on front. Salas in the SPG Red Bull sponsored machine in the lead. Alessandrini already second on the lap. Vunovic also looking to get by. But remember that draft down the Conrad Strait, they were practicing this race for today, especially with the new tire model to prepare, and there was a pass every single lap down this straightaway in their 20-minute test race. Yeah, that test race is going to be very important for the drivers that did do it, because new tire model coming in to the RS in service with the most recent update for the uh, start of the 2020 Season 1 has brought this new tire model to the MX-5 cars and they've changed the handling of the cars just a bit, made it a little bit tougher in the opening stints of the race, which is what we're going to be seeing now as Alessandri thought about the long way around of the chase. And that is uh, something very key that Salas just learned there because the track goes away to the right and Alessandri looks to have the right hand side, the uh, inside line, but the braking zone that you're setting yourself up for is for a left-hander. You need to get to the left-hand side of the track, and fortunately for Salas, the racing line puts him right on that spot heading into the kink, and he's able to defend his position. But coming into the later stages of the race, you can see those guys behind get a little bit more desperate and try to hold it around the outside for the chase, and then see what happens on the run down to Murray's corner, the final corner of the track. Indeed, right now they're working their way up the mountain straight. This is where we've seen Alessandrini move his way to second. He's getting the best out of everyone so far off the run, out of Helm Corner, up this straightaway, side by side for the race lead, and the opening stages of this round. Alessandrini, can he get clear into Griffin's bend? No. Salas sends it hard, oh, no, no, no. makes contact, and the top two crash. That all started, Salas was very, very deep on the brakes on the inside line. Overcooked it, just the smallest amount, the slightest bit of contact. Left rear of uh, Salas' car to the right front of Alessandrini's car. You got a replay coming up on screen of the incident, and you'll see just what happened. Contact basically through the apex of the corner coming up here. Salas, look how far behind he is now. He's almost a car behind him, and then on the braking zone, he about clears him. 
mid corner but runs wide of that racing line and both of them get put into the fence on the left big damage to both cars and that leaves out front now Maxim Abunovic and Marcello Paginon who I do believe Justin has a uh, quite the history at this track yes as mentioned two-time winner already in the two times the big C's MX5 challenge has been at the circuit point standings wise a bit of a rough start, not an entrance and not an entered race so far at this point. There are two drop rate weeks, however, so Ryan, and in turn, that means Marcello can't afford really any mistakes since he's already technically used the two drops. Right now, Racine Fazuli, his teammate at Movado Sim Racing, leads the standings entering today. Clampett, the driver, in the top five in second. Torres in third. Hartley and Wallace, who's kept rounding out the top five entering today. In other words, Pachnot needs to have a strong run today to help his championship run. He certainly does in those two drop rounds. We're not really going to know what's going to be the outcome of the championship right on top up until that final round because those drop rounds can change right up until the uh, that final round of the championship what about Heb, uh, Clifford Eben and uh, Brendan Hawken they're battling away for what should be about eighth place because they will move up a couple spots courtesy of that crash at the front Eben currently holding them off and this is almost a 10 car train for the lead this is similar to what we saw last time at Hawkins so then that incident has backed up the pack just a bit and the top 10 across the line covered by three seconds yeah right now that battle also includes robert hartley drying to lop with torres sonny kenshin remember that name one of the top veterans in all the mx5 racing cars mixed in as well this is a train from fifth on back and there is the strategy of saving fuel hawken appears to want to save fuel at the moment between these cars elected to stay behind so is steven van Opstel to stay inside the train right now the difference between them and the lead pack just a couple seconds behind the lead train yes yeah, certainly that fuel saving is going to be extremely important because oh we contact got one board. and you see the contact on board part of me there was sunny kenshin a big stack up at the head of the group that was logan clampin and james sharp that ended up checking everyone up after sharp had to get had a bit of a bobble on his colder tires up the hill coming out of the cup yeah and it checked up about four or five cars that made contact in the end just having a look now to see exactly which cars are involved looks like torres got a piece of it as did kenjin and john frontress prenoir as well logan clampett of course and james sharp so let's oh and kenjin just got hit up. and sonny kenjin's hard into the tire barrier his green and black machine destroyed the 059, so he is now into the garage area. Take a look at this. This was after what we just seen, working the way through Skyline, through the Coats Hire advertising board. Talk us through this as he got hit from behind. It's uh, unfortunate. I can't quite see that one, but it's very easy to do with Skyline. Notice in the qualifying practice, they're carrying the throttle a long way into that corner and the car is getting loose through there so the slightest piece of contact will unload your car into those tires very easily race reviewers also said there was a chain reaction by the way with the stack up we've seen between clampett as well as sharp so no harm no foul for penalties also racing incident has been declared for the 27 and 91 in that battle which sent out sandrini and salas around against the outside wall of griffin's bend coming into lap number five and an estimated 12 to go this time by Maxime Bunovic in the lead but Logan Clampett looking to close up the gap now the lead pack slowly trying to break away him and Paj no right now a Bunovic and Paj not Clampett though running in the 238s at the moment even with the checkups there is however a black flag for Van Alstro for the contact with Sonny Kenshin he will have to serve that black flag he will, so he will be taking himself out of that lead battle and out of contention for this race. I'm probably wanting to use this as one of his drop rounds as a result. I've just seen the lights come on. Of course, these races run into the evening and we get to see the cars race off into the night time when the lights come on. And uh, how good do these cars look under the lights? 
Yeah, it is going to be absolutely beautiful in the nighttime skies this evening. There's a local instant start time of seven around 7 p.m. Eastern time just about for today's action. Still 28 and a half minutes or so left on the clock for this round at the moment inside the top 10. Right now the top 9 and top 10 cards in fact still inside drafting range of Paz Non and company. But give a shout out to James Sharp. A stellar round so far for him in the 28 machine. Has started inside the top six. He's right now looking comfortable inside that top four. Keeping up with Logan Clampett, the E-NASCAR Peak Enterprise High Racing Series professional driver. And for the winner, last time out at Watkins Glen as well. Keep pace with them very nicely as Clampett is a massively committed down skyline through the S's. I think Sharp might have actually made a mistake because Hartley closed right up onto him and Hartley was someone that we saw in the action in round one, finishing in second place and a close, close finish. He just missed out on getting into the race last week, last time out at Watkins Glen. So he too is someone that can't afford too many mistakes, only got one drop round up his sleeve now as a result, but he's a very fast driver and someone I do believe coming into the season will be hoping to be in that championship battle. But he might just be in the battle fourth place here because with this lift showing up in the opportune place so it's time to get down onto the brakes here at the chase if he lunges it up the inside and he decides against it trying to save a bit of fuel though at SA is uh, quite a number of drivers in this top 10 right now the two-time champion Robert Hartley seeing cars behind him go off in the grass that's Brandon Hawkin going off God Francois Pinot amongst the drivers trying to fight and that was basically Hopkins sending a dive bomb to end all dive bombs into the chase. And he lost all those positions in the process. Take a look as this Mavado racing machine tries to set it hard on the left side of the chase. Yeah, he was a, a very ambitious. They might have just missed his brake mark with those cars on the right. Did a good job not to hit anyone and rejoined very safely as well. In the end, no harm, no foul for Brendan Hawkin, but won't want to be uh, risking that any uh, more because nine times out of ten you're gonna make contact there p3 though up for grabs clamp it under attack by james sharp sharp makes the pass on the high side and able to draft on by as they try and keep up with the lead pack the uk and i club driver is up inside the podium spot remember in the series the top 15 drivers do record points in this championship and right now sharp trying to put himself in a chance to have a max points day just inside the drafting range of Pagnon still just up the road the top two just about six to seven tenths up the track at the moment as they go up the hill and Pagnon has been catching or has caught Benovich drastically over the last lap he was a better part of uh, over half a second quicker than uh, Maxim Vunovic. So we'll see what the Pangelon wants to do here. Whether he wants to save a bit of fuel or get into the lead if he thinks he's got the speed. He might want to just get by him and clear out as much of a gap as he possibly can as Vunovic sliding pretty much the whole way down the mountain. The attitude of some of these cars is astounding. Yeah, they're going your full throttle, those cars. Third on back to keep up with first and second at the moment. And now Sharp has put himself in a spot down as they exit out the forest elbow to just stay inside the slipstream. However, Clampett and Robert Hartley are behind him. Hartley started in the 10th position, qualifying it with the 237.6. The pole times were in the 236s. Now he's looking to move himself forward. The two-time champion won his first two championships in the series history in seasons one and two as he looks to attack for the fourth position. Can he get the run on Logan Clampett quite yet? No, elects to save fuel, and that's what a champion likes to do. Try and think big picture and try and extend the fuel margin because races have been won and lost on how much fuel you can put in the race car. Yeah, indeed. We saw last time out at Watkins Glen how much big out Busquets had coming out of the pits, and we questioned his fuel number. I believe it made it home, but he was caught by the pack was able to save a little bit of fuel, but a number of drivers did run out coming uh, up towards the start-finish line. So they're going to be running it as, riskily, as risky as they possibly can, as close to that number as possible. And sometimes you hedge your bets a little bit. Maybe take a litre less than you uh, would ideally want in the hopes of being in a draft and saving that litre for the rest of the race. As we look back to Juan Domez's Torres, who was in that lead pack last time out. 
and he's running in P7 trying to hold off Clifford Eben and Brendan Hawkin and Kenny Brady. <laughs> yeah, Brady, remember, right, who won the season finale in Season 3. Pretty decent at these drafting tracks, can be an underdog right now. That 54 machine does have a bit of bodywork damage, though, and just staying inside the draft into 237s and 236s, these cars. 238s, rather, these machines are. And Torrance has had a good history at this racetrack. The problem is, though, he's got a lot of aero damage. See that front end? That's from that checkup before, as he's still trying to keep up with Pino, who also has a ton of front end damage on his Viking France machine. I'll tell you what, these two would actually be better served by jumping in behind Clifford Eben because he'll be able to punch that hole in the air much nicer, much cleaner than those two in front of them with the uh, front end damage. And they'd probably find themselves going a bit quicker because Penoir and Torres are going to be struggling down Conrod Strait with that damage to the front end. These cars, very low power, only 150 horsepower. There's not much grunt in them and you need every last bit of uh, aerodynamic efficiency as you can get. I think the scrunch chart front end does not help that one little bit. Now right now they're a bit slower than the lead group which has gone to five cars on the track in fact because Bunovich and Pajnan have been reeled in by James Sharp, Logan Clampett and Robert Hartley. Side by side they go for the race lead. Pajnan wants to take the point. Going his way into the chase through turn number 20. Clear by a mile. He's now up to the race lead. Will Sharp send it? No. Sharp backs off. Vunovic oh, takes contact. Around goes Pajnan. Vunovic collected. The whole top five involved as Robert Hartley drives by Sharp on the high side. The second group ball reels itself in. And a massive collision in the lead group collects four plus drivers. Clampett's got big damage. He's coming down a pit lane. That car's crabbing. He's going to need to take... One of his fast repairs. Let's take a look at the replay here. It unfolded as Paginon went by him down into the chase. We're on board with Hartley. We're watching Hartley. We can watch from the back here how it all unfolded as a uh, Vunovic in getting overtaken was too late on the brakes, tucking back in behind Paginon, turned him around. Paginon spun onto the racing line and it's checked up. These four drivers, Hartley, fantastic awareness to drive around the incident and escaped with no damage and I've just noticed live remarkably despite having front and rear damage James Sharp is still on the back of Robert Hartley he's actually a touch bit slower if not the insane miles an hour though compared to Hartley Hartley got through with zero damage but here's the problem the second pack of drivers is still reeling them in Pino Torres Brandon Hawkin even and Brady are all got within their draft because of how much everybody had to check up, check up. So this entire complexion, this race has flipped upside down as a majority of the drivers involved have made their way to the pit lane. And they have a spare car as well. We get two fast pairs, I believe, in this series. So I tell you what, we might actually see some of those drivers in the mix towards the end of the race, notably Logan Clampett, who managed to keep going relatively quickly compared to Hartley as opposed to the guys that did spin around and Clampett came down to pit lane straight away get that fast repair done get some fuel in the car he might actually emerge in this lead pack once it all shakes out once the pit stop phase is done so it might not be game over for some of those guys yeah it's a different strategy now for them because the fuel is supposed to make it 25 minutes is the estimate we're about uh, inside the pit window for a majority of the drivers, including these lead cars at this point. About four minutes or so is where it's estimated they might run to the empty sign. So eight estimated laps to go. Still anything can happen as the lead pack was as much as five cars. Now it's even bigger. Seven drivers now involved because Sharp has been reeled in by Pino and Torres along with Brendan Hawkin in that fight for position well robert hartley the question is when does the excite racing machine elect to come down this time going towards the middle veering to the pit lane he's going to try and go in this time he'll be followed by james sharp into the lane oh hartley struggling what is a very difficult pit entry here at mount panorama the uh, pit entry snakes left right back to the left and Hartley got a bit of the grass on the right, got a bit sideways. 
and James Sharp, his eyes were lit up when he saw that. He, uh, he made his decision to pit purely based off of Robert Hartley. That was purely reactionary, hoping to stay in the draft. And he did not want to lead yep. a pack with that car that he has there, which was uh, losing quite a bit of speed. But Sharp, yep. very slow down pit road. Yeah, a lot of cars pitting. Sharp can take the fast repair. But there was a crash as we were starting to see the pit stop window. George Fike got hit by Bunovich. Bunovich immediately black flag for that. George Fike having to take the tow truck as three cars were involved. Him, Bunovich, along with Michael Bolden. We also seen contact for Nico Taco amongst that wreck. So he is now in the pit lane. This was out of the forest elbow. On that, once again, it's in turn 18. Keep an eye. He had the contact from behind. You're going to see this come up in just a bit here on this replay, I believe. Again, it was George Fike that was originally hit down at the top of the mountain at the moment here we go down through the dipper they go all looking relatively good so far george fike into that car at the front of the train i dare say a dive to the inside might be the reason for this contact and bunovic has just slid in there and got into the left rear of george fike has been turned and collected by i couldn't quite see who that is and another car involved too but very unfortunate and bunovic probably could have done better there yeah michael bolden was one of the cars who had to stop in that as again bunovich given a black flag for both of the incidents caused one of the lead group and just now in that one speaking of lead group you know still leading this draft torres though saving with brandon hawken even and brady are amongst this draft at this point and the question is going to be when did these drivers elect to pit they are at that point where they might need to come in this time by. And it's going to be important to make sure they can get to the end of the race on fuel. So many races have been decided in this series. With drivers running out. Will Pino bring them down this time by? Juan Francois Pino's Viking France machine. Going along the left side. Corbin. Three drivers following that side. And everyone in that group elects to come in. And you wouldn't believe it, out on track, Robert Hartley is circulating behind none other than Logan Glampert. So he's found his way back into the provisional lead of the race. We'll see where these drivers have just been now are going to shake back out. But that's one more driver back into the lead contention as the sea of cars makes their way down pit lane. Most of these guys were front runners at the start of the race, so their pit box is quite a ways down. Harley and Logan Clampett are just making their way through the chase now. So, through the final corner, in fact, and onto the main straight. This is going to be incredibly tight here, this re-entry. Yeah, some of the cars making their way off the pit lane right now. They might come some side by side, in fact. No, Clampett, in fact, jumps out in front with Robert Hartley. So, the timing of how the incident happened there in the chase, and with Clampett immediately taking the fast repair... That might have been a genius strap because they're inside the fuel window to make it to the end of the race. And because everyone, a part of his group, had to check up, including the second group, which was a couple seconds behind in the first place, Clampett's now still in a great spot to potentially win this race, which is four drivers in front of him yet to pit. Yeah, certainly you could say it's a bit lucky, but we often see the informed drivers the really good drivers out there they often get that little bit of luck it's just the way it seems to go and it seems to have happened here for logan clampett but he's not home and dry because robert hardley is sticking right there with him and i think clampett did everything except brush the wall there on the inside of cut of the uh, the cutting it was very close trying to use up every last inch of this racetrack and hardly will like where he is because you don't want to be the car leading heading down coronal straight come the last lap Currently, this is the lead at the moment. Remember, these cars have yet to pit. This is Lindroff, Ari Lomi, Ari Harrow, and Emilio Largo. All in this drafting train of drivers who have yet to come down. And all of these drivers essentially are teammates in the, on the screen of the top three. The off-track racing machines making the longest stint of the entire race for all of these drivers on fuel. And looking at great position to make it. We have a crash, though. Pino and Kenny Brady look like they might have gotten involved. Those were drivers who were part of the lead group as you see Brady getting very squirrely still trying to get back on the gas. Let's take a look. This is on the GSRC replay here, here Ryan. As this got a bit dicey. 
tough to make out what happened. They make contact again down through Skyline. Another troublesome spot there. I didn't quite catch it there, Justin. Don't know if you saw it better than I did. It looks like there that, that Brady trying to go side by side. This was heading past McVillamy Park into Skyline. And then, racing incident, Brady trying to come down, expecting the driver underneath the checkup. Did not. And both of them making contact. Pino, in fact, was given the black flag for not doing so there. His first offense of the round. By the way, the leaders are currently in. They're already being passed, though, by Logan Clampin and company. So they will cycle back towards the end of the points window. They have, however, the benefit of having the least amount of fuel to put in the race cars. Just 16 seconds for them. Find this interesting, though. Clampett, Hartley, even along with some of the other drivers, put in as little as 13 seconds on the gas. So it might be interesting to see if they can make it on the fuel. They have cycled around 12th position on back. Yeah, indeed they have, and this is going to be interesting to see how this one plays out now, because it's a three-car train at the front. Torres is just a little bit way off, but if they start battling Torres we brought into this, there'll be four cars, and uh, Brennan Hawk and Paginon, they're quite a long way back, considering they were almost in that lead pack the, uh, right before that pit stop phase. But it's Logan Clamp and Robert Hartley that are licking their lips, and Clifford even too. Even had a pretty good run last time out at Watkins then as well, benefited from a few last laps and again, so net a, a, a solid result. So he's uh, been finishing very consistently in this series, and often consistency is what wins you championships. So uh, I think Clifford even will be just relishing the opportunity here to maybe get himself a race win. Logan Clampett, though, he wants to go back to back. Yeah, Clifford came in today, 7th in the point standings, 20 total to his name on the season so far, with his best finish, or his average finish, in the 11th position. Obviously in a position to potentially bump it up a little bit more, coming towards 11 minutes to go, 5 laps to go this time by, at the moment with Clampett trying to hold on, Hartley still falling behind on the draft, for Robert Hartley, he ended up taking two seconds more fuel than Logan Clampett. We should note on the racetrack. With Clifford taking the same amount as Logan Clampett. Looks like Hartley might be content on trying to have Logan burn up his fuel. Well, Clifford even that time backs off the gas heading into the chase. I wonder whether uh, Hartley's saving fuel, because Hartley gains absolutely nothing on Logan Clampett down Conrod straight. Maybe just saving a little bit of fuel on that car, and that might be why uh, we uh, are seeing him behind Logan Clampett at the moment. But he's uh, definitely harassing that bumper out of the chase. I'll tell you what, if he wants to make the move, he's got a great opportunity now into turn one. He's bump drafting him down this main straight. As you think about the move, he doesn't. So. He's just waiting and biding this time. There's just under 10 minutes to go, or just on about 10 minutes to go. So, getting to the stage where you've got to set yourself up to uh, be in the best spot possible, which in this series, on the last lap, it's not the lead of the race. But here he goes. Hartley side by side with Logan Clampett wants the lead right now. Coming towards an estimated four laps to go next time by at the stripe. They pull away from Eben, side by side. The two-time champion Hartley. Clampett sends it hard. Hartley slides up the racetrack in Griffin's Bend. Clampett holds on to the lead for the time being. They're side by side now for all three positions. Can they hold on? Clampett pulls away for the lead as they now go fighting for second spot. Clifford even nearly makes contact with Hartley as he comes back up. I can tell you that round the outside at Griffin's Bend turn two here at Mount Panorama doesn't work ever in any car in the real world form or in iRacing the track surface just doesn't let it happen it's a little bit camber to that corner the car on the outside loses so much grip it is virtually impossible to get it done barring a major checkup on the inside line it was a losing battle that one for Robert Hartley you've really got to be careful about trying that around the outside because you'll find yourself in the wall very easily there at this point though for Hartley you said setting up the move when do you go for the pass because you mentioned it you're a little bit. You don't want to be exactly the, in the lead of the wrong moment where you might have to try and block to hold onto the lead. When do you make the move to try and decide this? 
it's going to have to be, you're going to have to work out, it's a timed race, don't forget, not a, a lapped race. You're going to have to work out what lap's going to be the last lap of the race. Set yourself up for a position where you're not going to get done by the car behind Clifford Evans, just falling a long way off, coming down the mountain. And now, Robert Harley's firmly in that slipstream and getting a huge toe down into the chase as you have enough speed. Clampett's going to actually defend and let him go. And Logan Clampett there is playing some games. He did this last time out at Watkins Glen. He was two or three cars back starting the final lap. He won the race. Looking to do it again. An interesting decision from Logan Clampett, the Burning Kligerman eSports driver. That GTR simulator sponsored machine now. Also going to potentially allow Torres to get back inside the draft. He is just inside the range now of this black Mazda MX-5. About nine tenths behind for this, he is in fourth position. And that is also potentially going to allow, if there's enough time, Pashnon and Hawking to come back into the conversation with a couple others. You see them at the top of your screen. Well, Pashnon last time by at a 37.7, mirrored by Brennan Hawking behind him. Torres at 37.6. Logan Clampett, we saw him back off 39.8. 39 flat for Clifford Eben, 38.5 for Harley. So they're a second quicker, at least than the uh, fastest guys in that lead pack. They're catching them at a huge rate of knots. And if they continue to play games of not being the car leading the train, we're going to see about six or seven cars fighting for lead come the final lap of the race. One of the most crazy races and entertaining events in the entire history of the series so far. Four cars scrapped for the lead and a second group of drivers with five more drivers, including one lap car. At this point, who are you watching for at this point in this? Uh, I've got to say, I'm probably going to say it. My money's on uh, Logan Clamp, but again, we know how good he is at picking the right moment. And uh, I, I don't really mind who wins this race, other than the fact that we get a great finish. This has quickly become one of my favorite series on iRacing for how close the racing is. The MX-5 cars, some people might think, oh, the low-powered cars, nothing exciting about that. If they say that, show them this series, because boy, oh boy, what racing it gives us. Indeed, they do have a lap car up in front of them. Austin Clark is just up the road, the 39th place car. So there's a chance they will have to deal with that machine, and that might come into play for maybe Hartley. As we approach under six minutes to go now here, they have just an estimated two laps to go with how the pace has just gone off here. As Hartley's pulled away just about five, six car lanes. He has. I wonder if it's enough to get out of that slipstream. I'm just having a look from the perspective of Clifford even. Have a look at the uh, gap. He's just in that slipstream. But he won't want to let that gap get any bigger because you, the momentum gets... You, you, uh, let me rephrase my words here, Justin. The advantage you get from the slipstream gets stronger and stronger the closer you are to the car in front. You might be in slipstream range, but it's not particularly effective compared to if you're two car lengths behind them coming down Conrad Strait. So he's going to want to get closer. And when he does, he's going to drag a whole lot of cars with him because who's joined the back of this pack? None other than Torres. Clampett's now in behind Torres as well. Paginon and Hawken continue to lap at extremely quick pace compared to the leaders. A couple tenths quicker than Robert Harley that time. But if they start battling, they're going to be there. But there is, what now, just under five minutes to go. He should get two laps from here, I think. Yeah, it's going to be very tight in terms of that timing because of how long the laps are. And the 237 still for the drivers. Lead Pack does have to deal with one lap car in Austin Clark. So there's a chance that could be used as a bumper car, so to speak, for the rest of the pack that's closing in. Austin Clark oh, moves no. into the racing line. As that caused a big checkup, Torres and even having to barely just avoid him, clamp but also getting held up as Austin Clark now has to let by the second pack. That was a very, very awkward spot for Clark because he reached a point of the track where the racing line transitions from the outside to the inside and back to the outside of the track. He would have been better staying on the inside of there. Clifford even was extremely lucky not to make contact with him. And you've got to be predictable when you're a laps car. That from Clark was very unpredictable there, and even will be oh. fuming. 
and trouble. This involves the second pack. Pajdan giving a shot to the lap car. Spins him out also collecting Travis Wallace. And you can see that coming because Austin Clark was not showing respect for the blue flags. Gets hit them be fine as they needed to get by to catch up to the lead group. And I'm just having a look at it and... Uh, oh, <laughs> that was extremely poor from from the lapped car there. There's nothing else to say about that one. He jumped on the brakes right in front of Marcello Paginon. Basically on the racing line. Nothing Paginon could do. You cannot react that quickly to a car slamming on the brakes. Basically on your front bumper. And it's caused a chain reaction that's taken out multiple cars. And that is going to uh, upset a lot of people. Yeah, the lead pack is down to just four now. That can realistically stay inside the draft. They do have some lap cars. But the estimated time for the race has been shuffling time and time again. Right now, we'll have to see when they get the white flag. Two minutes and 31 seconds up on the clock. As Hartley tries to keep up away from Eben. He does have that big advantage over Torres. It's hard to reel in the leader when they break the toe with the draft, Ryan. It is, and Hartley's in that range now where he has broken enough of a gap. But if he makes a mistake, Eben's going to be there. Torres needs to get up here and work with Clifford Eben. Now you push him down Conrad straight. Give themselves both a bit of extra speed. You can see that Hartley's still worried about it, though. He's driving left and right, trying to in what we call a snake there forming a snake down the main straight trying to shake some of the drafts he's so far out in front of that even has got plenty of time to react to it and stay in the, uh, the distant draft of Robert Hartley but from this point Robert Hartley appears to be the man in the box seat if Torres can work with even though who knows they might just about get there into the chase on the final lap and what a finish that would be yeah there's about a minute 30 seconds on the clock and Still no single signal of a white flag for the driver, so it's going to be tight. What also could be tight here, Ryan, is the fuel now, because Hartley has this big advantage. He did take the most amount of fuel, essentially, out of the top five drivers on the racetrack, make it the top four. So he has that, and he's got Liam Sheen up in front of him as he moves to his right side. And a lot more respectful there from Liam Sheen than we saw earlier from the other lapped cars. He's basically coming to a stop here down Skyline, letting everyone go through. Fantastic stuff to see there. Not playing any part in the outcome of this race. Clifford Evans closed up on Robert Hartley, and he's right in the slipstream. He's going to gain on him down Conrad Strait. So Clifford Evans putting himself in a great spot now as they come down to Conrad Strait. He's only about four car lengths away from his another lapped car on the distance. That's Peter Vostrel. And he's going to get out of the way as well. But he's going to give a little bit of a toe to Robert Hartley. It's going to help him just a bit. But Clifford even. Is he close enough? There's uh, 30 seconds of the clock. I think they're just about going to get another lap in. It's going to be incredibly tight. Yeah, this is going to be one of the tightest it's been on the clock in the entire history of the series as well. Hartley in the chase. 13 seconds left on the clock. Will they have one more lap? Again, they have to see the white flag to be able to finish the race. Remember, the start and finish line is underneath the pit road bridge. Again, to signify for the Bathurst 1000. Looking like this is going to be potentially finished. Hartley dodges down. Coming across the stripe. In front of Clifford Evan Torres in third. Rounding out the top five. Brandon Hawken and Logan Clampett. And Linderoff and is going to come home in ninth right in front of Nico Avramani and Ario Haro and Lukaric running out the top 10 there as well. And yeah. a couple cars out of fuel too, making their way down into Murray's corner. Yeah, Owen Watts actually giving a bump draft to Nicholas Short to try and help him to the finish line. These are for points paying position. Short trying to start the engine and Watts... Ends up passing right on by. So, the, again, that is for a position at the just outside the top 10. 11th and 12th. P15, the last pain points position. Going towards Brian Zabolski. Pardon me. To Abasatic Hootkaput. Driver still finishing up the race around the 20th position on back. Largo and Savoy amongst the drivers fighting. Pino Olapkar in 41st position. We'll wrap things up for these drivers. A stellar race to say the very least here at Bathurst.
That was a remarkable race. I'm disappointed we didn't get that final lap because it was going to be a cracker. But Robert Hartley, he planned it to a T. He was there when it mattered. And uh, I think he knew it was going to be the white flag. He just slowed up. So they got the white flag there and finished the race. and didn't have to go a lap longer. Not one of the tightest it's been to get to the stripe. But we'll have your post-race coverage after these messages. You're watching the Big C's MX-5 Challenge. Live from the Mount Panorama Circuit on the Global Sim Racing... Welcome back everyone to Mount Panorama Circuit in beautiful Australia for more coverage of the Big C's MX-5 Challenge after what was a thrilling one here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Justin Prince alongside Ryan Jones, Sean Ambrose in the director's seat. Let's look at your unofficial race results where Robert Hartley started in 10th. The two-time series champion came home with the W today. Clifford Evans came way home in second today with Torres in third. Hawkin after a checkup in the second pack with the lap cars, finished in fourth. Logan Clampett coming out with the top five. He was involved in that first big stack up of the lead pack. He was able to still get in the pits and rebound with that top five run. Lindroff came home in six. Are we Lomi? Quietly in seventh would herald all three of those OTR machines playing a decent strategy. They were as around the edge of the top ten before the pit stop window. Alexander Lukowitz rounds out ninth and Travis Wallace inside the top ten Ryan. Coming home in 11th place then was going to be Owen Watts that we saw pushing Nicholas O short across the line there. And then, uh, of course, a short home in 12th, Taylor Lane 13th, Brian Sabelski in 14th, that a, uh, a, <laughs> sorry, ahead of Abdes, uh, I'm giving it up. Vodka Verdi there in 15th, sorry fellas. Uh, 16th place went to Perakarpi in 16th, Taylor was 17th ahead of Jeff Lovell. 
and Nico Kako 19th and Emilio Lago 20th. Greg Savoy finishing 21st, Simon Apolding 22nd, Max Bradio quiet run started 38th after qualifying the 239s, but finished in 23rd outside the points. However, Bremen 24th, Sam Devantier in 25th, Tom Gressel. Rie in 26, Michael Borden involved in one of the incidents in 27, Paul Jackson 28th spot plus 20, Jonas Seeger coming to home in 29th, and Rachel Williams in the 851 machine rounded up the top 30, started in last Ryan on the grid, finishing 30th. Not a bad effort indeed, and then it was Marcus Altone in 31st, George Filk 32nd, Peter Vostrel coming home in 33rd. And then from 57th on the grid, actually, two further back from Williams up to 34th was Liam Sheen, Fabian Ponce in 35th ahead of Marcelo Pagion. We saw running at the front for a majority of that race, getting involved in incidents through the middle stages. Alex Albert 37th ahead of Adam Arak from 38th, Austin Clark, and then running out the top 40, another front runner for some stages was Jean Francois Ponoir. Caleb Patry finishing 41st, a rough race for James Sharp. Here in his first, one of his first races with Mavano Racing Team as well. A Fortry 42nd, he was in contention for the win. Kenny Brady was inside the top 10 before he got involved in an incident. Finished 43rd, six laps down. Capoletto 44th. Ashili Medea in 45th, quiet race for him. Maxime Bunovic, black flag, got into two incidents. Finished in 46th after being one of the lead contenders for the first half of the race. Van Alpstro got a black flag himself, finished in 47th. James McRitchie, 48th. Koei Kit Kitio Mira in 49th. And Natalchik with a quiet run in the 50th position. Sonny Kenshin, he was one of the main contenders today, finished 51st. Cameron Coleman Salas also did not finish. Alessandrini got involved in an incident, unfortunately, for him in the 27. Maxim Dottili, 13 laps down in 56. And the last driver to take the green flag today was Austin J. Smith, 15 laps down. Jake Johansson and Kian Rayleigh Howell did not make the start for today's round. But it was an entertaining one for sure today. And the man who took the checkered flag was Robert Hartley. Robert, crazy race. How are you feeling after what was a crazy win for you today? Oh, I'm feeling great. That was that was really fun. You know, I started down in tenth, and the crashes started happening, and and it started coming to me, and I ended up getting the lead with a big stack up, and uh, pretty much held it from there on out with Logan Clampett after the pit stops. There, it was a lot of fun. It looked like a lot of fun. Again, Robert Hartley joined us here in the Minus 273 post-race show. Uh, let's talk about uh, everything to, as you try to basically think things through because you worked your way from the edge of the top, inside the top 10 and qualifying, had to deal with a few checkups in front of you, and then the major stack-up to end all stack-ups in the chase involving four of the top five where you were the only driver to avoid damage inside the top five in that incident. Yeah, when I, at that point in the race, I was trying to save some fuel because I had not saved any the whole time, just trying to catch up to the lead. And uh, they all come in there and had a big stack up. I think somebody got loose maybe and spun on the outside, and I just slowed down enough to get to the far inside and, and clear them. And it gave me the lead, and it was pedal to the metal after that. It did look like pedal to the metal, and in the end, coming away with a victory by three tenths of a second. A good run for you overall. Let's quickly talk about the next round up on the schedule. Next round sees us go to Interlagos, a different race track to say the least, compared to some of the others on the schedule this season. Your thoughts on Autodroma Jose Carlos Passe and that circuit in round four? Yeah, that one's probably going to be another draft battle, you know, down that straightaway, but. You know, you just got to put yourself in the right positions and make the passes when you got to and just try to be there for the end. Anyone you want to thank for being a part of your victory here today? Just like to thank uh, Clifford Evans and uh, the sponsors he's got to got this league rolling as good as it is. Congratulations on the victory today, Robert. Welcome back to Victory Lane, my friend. Thanks, guys. That was Robert Hartley. First winner outside Marcel Pagnon in the history of the series at Mount Panorama Circuit. Standing by with second place is Ryan Jones. Ryan
Clifford second place today. Another fantastic result to back up your performance last week out. Congratulations, mate. And uh, you just came up short against Hartley at the end. Did you have a bit more on the tank if it went the extra lap, or did Hartley slow up to uh, bring that race one lap short? Um, well, I was very close on fuel. I took a gamble, but it worked out when I came out of the pits, and I was up with Logan and Roberts. Uh, just tried to hang on to them. I had to save a little bit, and then when it came down to it, he was just a little too far for me to completely get there or get close enough for a pass, so I had to settle for second, but it was a great race. It certainly was. There were a number of incidents though, at the front of the field that took out a few contenders. Not sure whether you had good views of them. Uh, from your perspective, though, how was the racing? Was it was it clean? Did you think some people maybe got a little bit desperate and it might have led to some of those uh, big incidents at the front? It um, wasn't entirely as clean as I would have hoped, especially for some of the really skilled drivers that are at the front. Just some mistakes, I guess, caused that. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to make contact with those people or uh, get in contact with those people and clean things up for the next race well for the most part the race was still fantastic as it uh, always seems to be in this series another full field putting on the show for us so you come up nine spots in the end after that uh, that fuel gamble and uh, now you've had two good results after a, a bit of a miss out there in round one are you looking at the championship and thinking you might be able to have a little, a little stint to the championship? Or is there a, a particular spot you're aiming for? Um, top three would be nice because I'm in contention for one of the prizes, but I just don't think it's going to add up that way. I've just gotten lucky here. I uh, had some draft races to open up the season, so it's gotten me up into pretty good spots. But uh, I'm not sure how well I'll do when it comes down to it in the title because there's drops and other things that'll mix people back in. So we'll just see how it goes, I guess. But I'm more than thrilled with how this has started. Well, it's been a good start for you, and luckily for you, next round is into Lagos, another circuit where slip tuning is going to be important coming out of that final corner. Uh, are you hoping to win that race before we get into some maybe circuits that might not be so strong for you without the draft? Oh, that would definitely be nice, but that is one of my worst tracks. I really struggle there, um, but I I'll try. I'll put some practice in and just try my best. Of course, the new tire model is a whole different beast. All right, well, uh, we'll definitely look out and see how you go for the rest of the season. Before we let you go, anyone you'd like to give a shout-out to, sponsors? Yeah, I would like to thank the league sponsors, GTR Simulator, Sim Racing Studio, Minus 273, Turn Racing, and SHH Shifter for all the support, GSRC for the great broadcasts, and all the competitors so far. We've had massive fields, and it's awesome to see. Well, thank you so much, Clifford. Hope to see you back up here in the booth post-race with us next time out. And... Uh, Justin, I do believe, is standing by with our third place finisher for today. Uh, in fact, our fourth place finisher for today, Brendan Hawken. Yeah, Brandon Hawken, having an eventful one, to say the very least. An eventful weekend started with a dominating victory in the club sports series on the Saturday. Then today happened. You started 11th, and pardon me, started 9th and came home in 4th. How would you describe your race today, Brandon? It was an interesting one for sure, Justin. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, qualified not not quite the way I wanted to, but it's still in the right position considering that, like how how like strong the field was today. And uh, yeah, I was uh, I didn't quite feel like on it per se, but uh, yeah, um, <laughs> I uh, lucked out a lot by others' misfortunes, unfortunately for them. But uh, yeah. Th um, that was that was an intense race for sure. I uh, a lot of close calls, and uh, yeah, I'm glad I didn't take anybody with me on that uh, one failed, unintentional dive bomb there. Yeah, what was the thought process on that? Because you tried to dive it past what appeared to be three, two or three cars for position, and as well had to dodge some drivers overall. Uh, what was the thought on that one to try and see if it could stay? Uh, not much thought really. Um, <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, I was trying to outbreak Clifford, um, but and so I was using him as a kind of like a gauge, and then uh, but but he he broke like really late, uh, like pretty much as late as you can go, and I just I just com completely blew the corner. I didn't mean to do that at all, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately yeah. we didn't take anybody out, and uh, yeah we didn't lose too much time from it. Yeah, you had to also, of course, avoid the contact of the lap car. What did you see there? With That involved your teammate, unfortunately, for you and Pajnan up in front of you as you were trying to reel in the lead group towards the white flag. Yeah, that was really unfortunate for Marcello. Um, what what I saw was, like, there, there was a lap car, 
and uh, it looked like he just braked a little bit earlier than Marcello expected. And uh, yeah, they both hit, and I think that took out like three of them, which was was really unfortunate. But uh, yeah, there there wasn't wasn't much Marcello could do there. I don't think though. Indeed, your ne your thoughts on how your start of the season has gone so far before we head off to Interlagos in the next. Um, it was it was pretty rough to begin with. I missed the first race because uh, I think the server filled up in like three minutes or something crazy like that. <laughs> uh, so I missed the first race, got taken out last week. But uh, I think I think uh, this race it's a little bit of good momentum for next week. Not sure what track we're at. I'll have to look at that. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to next week and we'll see how we can do. Anyone you want to thank before we say goodbye to you, before you, and also before you prepare for Interlagos in round. Oh, Interlagos, nice. All right. Um, yeah, I'd like to thank you guys for the broadcast. You guys do an amazing job all the time. And uh, Clifford for the series, he, he does a really good job organizing it. And, of course, my teammates at Thrustmaster Mavana Racing, we, uh, we really enjoy working with them. So, yeah, that's about it. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for the time, Brandon. Congratulations to the fourth place finish. Brandon Hawking from Mavano Racing coming on fourth. Again, here with the minus 273 post ratio, whether it's on the track or the virtual track, minus 273 has one goal in mind. Boost the best racing gloves to get the job done with unmatched comfort, durability, and style. Their gloves will leave your old ones in the dust. Find out how they can help you by visiting minus 273.biz. And before we get to our final thoughts, let's take a look at your turning point as well, presented by Turn Racing. And this was a very interesting turning point for today's race and a consensus amongst us really for today for how the battle started to unfold and some of that contact that happened in that lead group, Ryan. Yeah, that was a, a very messy incident that occurred there and unfortunately led to a, a number of races being changed quite dramatically. And... Uh, it's the product of what, what we see with the uh, big slipstreaming tracks. You have a massive braking zone at the uh, back end of uh, these long yep. straights, and people are bound to make mistakes, and unfortunately, we've seen that today. Yeah, the lap traffic came into a factor in the turning point. That helped partly pull away and have to deal, not have to deal with the slipstream coming to what turned out to be the checker flag lap to take the victory today in round number three. Once again, that's your turning point presented by Turn Racing. Merge the gap between Simsport and Motorsport with Turn Racing. Turn carries a wide variety of steering wheels to suit any and all of your needs. From advanced sim racing wheels to practical street wheels, they will surely have something for you. Check them out at turnracing.com. Before we say goodbye and say thank you to our sponsors, Ryan, your thoughts before we get ready for Interlagos. Well, fantastic race again. And uh, once again, it came down right to the uh, final milliseconds of the race, trying to find out whether we're going to get the extra lap or not. Uh, we've shown a bit of everything in today's racing. We, we saw some uh, some crashes, some uh, fantastic side-by-side -side racing, and uh, as ever, a massive field. I'm disappointed not to be here next week, but I can't wait to come back and call some more of the series. Hope to have you back very soon. A great job by you today, Ryan Jones. Thank you very much for the time once again for today's broadcast. Well, again, we'd like to apologize to our sponsors for the technical issues at the start of today's broadcast. Again, we apologize for the technical issues, and we want to take the time to thank those sponsors right now. First off, GTR Simulator, the sponsor of the Countdown to Green. GTR's racing simulators are currently used as training aids for professional race car drivers. You too can learn to ace that braking, sharpen those corners, and shave off those vital seconds. Whether you're a professional driver or a gamer looking for a more immersive way to play, GTR has your back. Get started today at gtrsimulator.com. Also, like to thank our starting grid sponsor for today in Sim Racing Studio, where if you want to enhance your sim racing experience but don't feel like spending hours doing it, Sim Racing Studio creates plug and race sim racing accessories and software that can enhance your experience without any DIY effort. Go to simracingstudio.com for more information. Once again, thanks again to Minus 273 as well as our sponsor in Turning Point. Also, like to thank the sponsor in the second place prize in H in the SH Shifter. Ooh, the second prize this season goes towards the new Shifter. Also, like to thank Clifford and Evan for organizing what was a competitive race today and what was an eventful one in the Big C's MX5 Challenge. 
Also, like to thank the companies that provide our software and hardware for our broadcast listed up on your screen now. But additional thanks to Jude Luan, who provides our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get more of our great work. Thanks to the team of today, again, of Sean and Ryan. If you'd like to find out GSRC's upcoming races, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. You can also check out our social media at GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. Don't forget to head over to our YouTube page and hit that big red subscribe button, as well as the notification bell so you don't miss a moment here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Also, be sure to head towards the description of the Global Sim Racing Channel to check out GSRC's brand new merchandise store. Now, lots of different items are available. Be sure to check it out. Next race is at Interlagos. That will take place at the same time at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on what should be an eventful one in mid-December. We also have many upcoming races for other series listed up on your screen. So check those out and mark them down in your calendar. But until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.